hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so we'll continue our discussion with material science and engineering and in the previous video we discussed about the toughness test or impact test the Izod and Charpy test we discussed so in this video we are going to discuss uh, about the testing of another mechanical property associated with engineering materials which is hardness hardness testing the various types of tests that are performed to measure the hardness of a material so all of these testing that is done is done taking into account one important aspect related to the mechanical property of engineering material which is deformation okay which is which occurs as a result of applied stress so deformation usually results in change in the length and cross-sectional area of the material so it is of two types that is reversible and irreversible so if it is reversible or recoverable it is called as elastic deformation and if it is irreversible it is called as plastic deformation so the testing that is done on the engineering materials for the various uh, examination of mechanical properties there are two types destructive and non-destructive destructive ones in which the material gets damaged non-destructive one in which it remains intact so various types of mechanical testing is done uh, depending on the properties under test which are required to be tested so tensile test impa impact test hardness test fatigue test and creep test so here we'll discuss about hardness so hardness is a measure of the resistance of a metal usually metals they are subjected to hardness test uh, the resistance of a particular metal to permanent plastic deformation that is irreversible deformation okay so what is done is an indenter is used which is forced upon the particular metallic specimen the test piece and that indenter material is basically a sphere spherical ball shape or conical shaped or pyramid shaped structure and it is made of materials that is harder than the test piece okay the material which is used for the test piece so hardness testing it is uh, basically uh, done by applying a particular load value slowly and uh, at perpendicular 90 degree angle to the specimen and after the indention is made it is withdrawn the indenter is withdrawn and depending on the depth of indention how much amount of indention has happened the hardness is judged so basically the more the indention the less harder the material and the less the indention the more harder the material okay so generally the indenter materials that are used they are hardened steel tungsten carbide or diamond they are the inden the indenter materials so how the uh, hardness value is uh, determined to get us a numerical value for that a hardness number is determined it is calculated depending on the various aspects such as the depth of indention the structure of the indenter material uh, so all of this is taken into account to determine the hardness number and uh, the hardness of a material it depends on how easy the material it undergoes plastic deformation okay so different types of hardness tests are performed which gives us different values of hardness numbers and four types of common types of hardness tests are done so first is called as the Brinell test then the second one is Vickers test third one is Noob test the fourth one is Rockwell test for all these four hardness tests the indenter materials are different the structure is different 
and as a result of that the hardness number the empirical hardness number which is calculated the calculations are also different so we'll discuss them one by one so first one is Brinell hardness test so here the indenter material is uh, basically a uh, steel or tungsten carbide sphere the sphere of diameter capital D that is the indenter material this is the specimen surface so the indenter is forced to penetrate the specimen surface forming an indention see it is penetrating into the specimen surface so the diameter of that indention from the top view that is small d okay when we see it from the top view this will be the diameter of the indention because it is a spherical structure so a circular indention will be formed so small d is the diameter of the indention capital d is the diameter of the indenter material the spherical structure okay the difference between the two is very important capital D is the diameter of the indenter material small d is the diameter of the indention which is formed okay the penetration which is formed which is from the top view it is it will look like a circle the 3d view so depending on this the Brinell hardness number which is calculated that is given by 2 capital P divided by pi D D minus root over of capital D square minus small d square P is the load value which is applied as capital D is the diameter of the spherical material small d is the diameter of the indention the circular indention which is formed from the top view this okay so all the calculations have to be very accurate and precise to get us the accurate and precise value of the Brinell hardness number okay and capital P is the load value next is the Vickers hardness test here the indenter material is a diamond pyramid shaped structure okay something like this okay so here again it is forced upon the specimen surface forming a penetration indention and here the from the top view this diagonal of the indention okay because it is like this the indention which is formed from the top view when it is seen it looks something like this from the top view and it is seen from the top and this is this diagonal that is given by d1 the length of the diagonal of the indention which is formed which is almost of a uh, a square shape not square square rectangular shape so this length of the diagonal that is given by d1 and the wicker hardness number which is calculated it is given by 1.72 capital P by d1 square where d1 is the length of the diagonal okay so this is the Vickers hardness number and another important thing to take care of is that the angle okay this angle it should be 136 degree okay the angle between these two points okay this is the side view this is the top view taking into account the indention which is formed and this diagonal the length of the diagonal is very important for this Vicker hardness number formula okay so always pay attention to the side view don't get confused by the side view and the top view here the indention is spherical in nature so this is the indention top view of the indention here because it is a diamond shaped structure so when the indention is formed it looks something like this and this diagonal length it is very important of the indention for the Vickers hardness number calculation the length of the diagonal of the indention okay next is noop hardness test so for noop hardness test also a diamond shaped pyramid is used but here there is a slight difference here the diagonal lengths for uh, the wicker hardness test it is the same both the diagonal of the indention they are the same but for noop hardness test a different type of uh, diamond pyramid is used where the length of the diagonals are different one of the lengths of the 
diagonals it is long it is slightly more than the other one okay so here the longer diagonal length is l and the smaller diagonal length is b where some particular ratios are taken care of l by b is equal to 7.11 and b by t is equal to 4 where t is the thickness or the depth of penetration of the indenter material into the specimen this thickness okay the the depth the amount of distance it has penetrated into the test material or the specimen so that depth is equal to small t so depending on that l by b is equal to 7.11 and b by t is equal to 4 where l is the longer diagonal length and b is the smaller diagonal length depending on the indenter material and the indention so this is the side view this is the top view okay taking into account the indenter material again here this is for the wicker hardness test same diamond pyramid structure but here the length of the diagonals are the same so always remember for wicker hardness test and for noob hardness test diamond pyramid is used that is the indenter material but for wicker hardness test the indenter material both the diagonal lengths are the same d1 but for noob hardness test the indenter material the diamond pyramid the diagonals are of different length one is longer one is shorter and the noob hardness number it is given by 14.2 p by l square where p is the load applied l is the longer diagonal length this this okay so this is the noob hardness number next is rockwell hardness test so here the indenter material is diamond cone or steel sphere so these are the two indenter material that can be used and depending on which one is used the hardness number calculation is different so two types of indenter materials can be used first one is diamond cone with angle 120 degree taking into account the indention and the two points uh, uh, this angle should be 120 degree remember here for Vickers it was 136 degree and for Rockwell it is 120 degree so this is the diamond cone and this is the steel sphere okay so depending on that the calculations are different here the depth of penetration the amount the indenter material has penetrated into the specimen that is very important okay so the amount the indenter material has penetrated into the specimen that is important for both rockwell hardness test for the steel sphere and the diamond cone so the calculations are for diamond cone the rockwell hardness number is 100 minus 500 t where t is the depth of penetration for steel sphere the rockwell hardness number is 130 minus 500 t again t is the depth of penetration so the depth of penetration it will be different depending on the nature of the indenter material whether it is a spherical structure or a diamond cone shaped structure so depending on that these hardness numbers will be different so all is dependent on the depth of penetration so if you uh, compare these hardness test in rockwell hardness test there is no uh, you know no physical parameter associated with the indenter material is coming into play the diameter or the length of the diagonal nothing like that here the depth of penetration is coming into play how much distance the indenter material is penetrating into the specimen whereas in other hardness test whether it is Brinell hardness test or Vickers hardness test or Noop hardness test some parameter associated with the indenter material is coming into play for example in Brinell hardness test capital T the diameter of the indenter material is coming into play in Vickers hardness test the diagonal of the indenter material from the top view the diagonal of the indenter material which is both the same that is coming into play in noop the again the leading diagonal the longer diagonal 
that is coming into play the longer diagonal length of the indenter material that is coming into play okay but in rockwell the physical parameters associated with the indenter material are not coming into play here the thickness or uh, the depth of penetration okay the depth of the penetration for both the steel sphere or the diamond cone that is coming into play how much distance the indenter material has gone through or penetrated into the specimen so depending on this the hardness numbers are calculated now uh, depending on what type of material or metal is used and depending on its operational specifications one of these four hardness tests can be performed or all of them can be performed to find out the different hardness numbers and depending upon the operational requirements the necessary decision can be taken for the selection of a particular engineering material so these are the different types of hardness numbers the empirical values of the hardness numbers that are given depending on the tests that are performed the indenter materials and the all the aspects associated with it so here we have discussed about the common hardness tests okay so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much